Good evening. I'd like to call the February 23rd, 2017 meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to trustees to order. Um, for the roll call, Nick Rico. Here. Rob McSorley is absent. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Dan Viola. Here. Aubrey Strauss. Here. Joe Carroll. Here. And I'm Charles Anderson. Uh, next item is the approval of minutes of January 26th. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved and seconded. Any comments, questions, corrections to offer? None. Job, Wendy. None? All right. It, nice job, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? None opposed. All right. Superintendent's operations report. A copy of a monthly report of operations for the month of January is including the packet. Our average F1 flow for the month was 1.46 million gallons per day. Our F1 quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 90% BOD uh, removal and 95% TSS removal with monthly averages of 21 and 11 milligrams per liter respectfully. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of January is included. Your Packet. Oh, note Wendy that Rob arrived at 731. Uh, we continue to have some high flows in Industrial Park and Liberty Road Pump Station, and uh, with the, the winter weather that we've had, we haven't really been able to do much out with that investigation. Um, the Jet C 12 week uh, operated training course is ongoing. Uh, Josh. Uh, continues to attend uh, the 12 week course and today I actually conducted uh, training for the day for the the, uh, the operators on uh, preliminary treatment and that went very well um, John Kennett uh, attended the Maine Water Utilities Association February conference in Portland and our annual audit, audit uh, last thing Willett and Associates were on site on February 20th and began their audit. Um, they anticipated completing the audit this month and will make a presentation of their findings at, tr at a trustee's regular monthly meeting right now, anticipating that's actually going to probably be the April meeting. Okay. Any questions for the superintendent? Thanks, Dave. Um, next item is correspondence. We had uh, three pieces of correspondence this month. Um, we got a letter that was titled uh, uh, the 2015 Annual Report of Compliance from DEP. I believe it was just a typo with regards to our 2016 report. Um, the report uh, uh, states that we, they, they found us in compliance. Our, uh, we re we sent out a, uh, we had a request for and provided an ability to serve letter for the residents at Gateway Commons, which is located at 259 Payne Road. And uh, this, this letter was provided for a <coughs> proposed 288 unit apartment complex and a flow with a flow estimate of 59,350 gallons per day. The process was originally approved for a mixed-use development, including offices, a hotel, and a child care facility. Um, the, the approved flow was for 22,495 gallons per day, and the capacity reserve fee associated with this flow was paid. Thus, uh, 36,855 gallons per day uh, of the 59,350 uh, requested flow would be subject to uh, additional capacity reserve fees. Um, the current fee is 1531 per gallon based on January 2017. And based on this rate, that total capacity reserve fee due would be $564,250.05. Um, <coughs> we also got a request for, and I provided an ability serve letter for 25 Plaza Drive. Um, this was for a 5,235 square foot office building uh, with 5,235 square foot um, 
feet of uh, residence space on the second and third floor in a proposed 5,000 square foot uh, banking institution. The total requested flow is for 13,459 gallons per day of uh, typical sanitary waste. And that's all we have in correspondence. Okay, thanks. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, um, just a uh, comment, please. Uh, if we could, I'm sending these ability to serve letters to the engineers, could we copy the owners? Because I know there was an issue years ago when some owners didn't realize that they had to pay such, uh, they didn't know about the fees, supposedly. Or at least they claimed they didn't see anything. So <coughs> I think if we CC the, the owners, in response to these requests for ability to serve, that would help with the communication. I, I can do that. They get copies of the approvals once the project comes forward. Uh, there's sometimes a lot of time difference between yep. these requests. Good and, idea. Even if they come forward. Okay. Thank you. It's still, still a good practice, though, to copy the owners on those communications. Ben? Well, I just had a question on the, you know, this seems like a large amount of 564,000. Um, <clears> would they be trying to do the whole thing at once or would they be breaking that up or just, you just don't know at this point? I don't know at this point. Yeah. Okay. But if they wanted to break it up into portions, if, they, they could. If they phase the project, um, we would phase the fees. Okay. Um. With regard to uh, the Plaza Drive mm -hmm. project, Plaza Drive is a private sewer system internal to the commercial plaza. Correct. Um, so I know we don't have any responsibility to uh, maintain or, or operate that system, but did they, have they provided an analysis of the system to indicate to us that that system will accommodate the peak flows from this? Uh, or are we just not concerned about it? Uh, they have not provided us with those calculations. I did note in the uh, ability to serve letter that it is discharged into a private sewer system and that they need to confirm that it has the ability to convey the, the waste water. So, um, so before we act on an approval for this will have some confirmation from their engineers mm -hmm. that the system is okay for the additional flow. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Mr. Chairman, follow up on that. Um, the developer that proposed this on Plaza Drive, are they the same owners of that private sewer system? Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? No? Okay, let's move on. Uh, old business, there is none. New business. Um, first item in the new business is discussion of the restaurant sampling requirements. At our last meeting, as part of an approval that we granted, um, the superintendent had recommended monthly sampling uh, of the discharge from the proposed restaurant and had explained to us um, that well, he wasn't here, but it indicated to us that uh, there's a you know an issue about uh, the strength of the uh, wastewater being discharged from some restaurants. So, we, um, based on comments from Nick and concerns that he expressed about consistency, um, wanted to just put an item on here to discuss this. So I'll turn it over to Dave to review his. Uh, agenda comments with us and then we can have a uh, discussion to whatever extent the board wants to carry on. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, as uh, Mr. Rico had noted, you know, I've been including in the recommendations for approvals of restaurants monthly sampling requirements that the owner would be responsible for. Um, Mr. Rico had expressed some concerns with requiring uh, consequently, this was added to th this agenda uh, for an open discussion. Um, you know, for, for some history, uh, a while back, it was brought to my attention that uh, we should pay more attention to the strength of uh, restaurant wastewater. And as a result of this, I, I had learned this at a conference. And as a result of this, we started doing some testing of the wastewater at um, 
the Red Robin and the Texas Roadhouse restaurant here in town, and they were selected because they were um, they had good two good sampling locations that were relatively close. They're close to them, each other. They're right next one, door to one another. And so I, I, I provided a summary of these results um, below in a table. And as you can see in the results, uh, it shows that the strengths um, do far, far exceed typical sanitary waste. And, um, and during all of this, I also did do some research and found that even within main subsurface rules, uh, disposal rules, uh, they have identified restaurant wastewater uh, with um, as a high strength wastewater, uh, but they had, they're using a factor of 1.8 uh, at to account for this uh, elevated strength. What I found at uh, Red Robin, in summary, is that the uh, strength of the wastewater actually far exceeds the, uh, the that 1.8 number uh, with regard to uh, BOD and uh, TSS and COD at Red Robin, the, the values were in order, 1,217 uh, milligrams per liter, 1,319 milligrams per liter, and uh, 1,473 milligrams per liter as compared to our baseline, um, which is our standard for high strength, which is uh, 200, 200, and 600. So they, they were having... Um, uh, uh, peaking factor of uh, 6.1 and 6.6 .6 over what we would uh, consider typical. Uh, the Texas Roadhouse um, uh, was similar, not quite as extreme as Red Robin, uh, but it certainly was uh, very similar in strength. Uh, average concentrations for BOD was 983, uh, for TSS was 1,065, and then BOD was 1,939. And you know their peaking factors were 4.9, 5.3, and 3.2 in comparison to our strength. So, um, you know, my intent is once we get a handle on the actual characteristics, we'll reassess the sampling requirements at each location and adjust it accordingly moving forward. And this is the reason why I've started including these uh, those requirements in um, in the restaurant approvals. Um, so, mm -hmm. open it up. Uh, yeah, before we open it up, I just want to clarify. Um, we've just named two businesses in Scarborough, two restaurants in Scarborough. Uh, they're not doing anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with their operation. Um, we're simply comparing that wastewater uh, to... Um, the parameters that we use for billing purposes. So I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea and think that either of these two establishments is doing something wrong and that we're singling them out. Uh, we just are using them as a part of a database to take a look at at what is uh, being discharged to the system versus what we had assumed was going to be discharged to the system. And so um, ahead, yeah. one thing I just, to add to that discussion, last, um, if you noticed in last, uh, month's uh, trustees meeting, I, I did give a summary of um, uh, the average BOD concentrations coming into the plant, and it, it you know, and I think I noted in, in there that uh, there has been a marked increase in our influent concentration, and it's been steady every year for the last um, uh, number of years. Um, when I first got here. Our average BOD was 214 milligrams per liter. Um, it, it, this, in 2016, our average concentration was 270 milligrams per liter. So, and there had been a, has been a marked increase every year since coming on board. Um, whereas you're not getting the same increase in the uh, flow coming into the plant. It, the flow has been relatively consistent. So, assuming assuming that the basic characteristics of waste discharges from residential properties are the same, um, these strengths would go up because of use of low flow um, uh, fixtures, elimination of infiltration, and other factors that might include dilution, and could also be associated with increased 
uses of garbage disposal units over what uh, was in effect back in the late 1970s when when the rate structure was basically uh, based on what, what was the prevailing uh, wastewater strengths and concentrations at, at that point in time. So some things have changed, and I think we're just showing some of those changes and some of the some of the um, analysis that we're performing now. Uh, <coughs> questions or comments, Rob? Uh, a couple of questions. First, either of these restaurants do they pay a surcharge at all, or yes, they do. And what is that surcharge based upon? Uh, well, it, they have their base fee and uh, their surcharge fee, and I, we were, I meant to bring the, the numbers with me. Um, I believe their surcharge amount at Red Robin was somewhere around, uh, was it $3,000? I think so. Yeah. And that, and that was based upon these? These numbers, yeah. These numbers, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, just to clarify, Rob, our rate structure includes, um, includes additional uh, charges for high strength waste and right. typically those are, are applied to in <coughs> typically those are applied to industrial users because that's where you really have where we've always been concerned about you know uh, um, a brewery coming to town and you know with with uh, tons of BOD being discharged whatever or some kind of manufacturing process um, and uh, and the restaurant industry has not been one that we have paid a lot of attention to with regard to strength of the wastewater until just recently. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there are other restaurants and whatnot that we currently sample and, and charge surcharges on too? We no, there are other restaurants that are on uh, that have been identified through our approval process that will will be sampling once they get up and running. Um, this is a new program that you know, I mean, just this past year really has been identified. This is the significance of it. So these two restaurants only have been paying surcharge for the past year or so. Past year. Okay. Um, question for you: I know that part of this comes with. Uh, water conservation, Charlie alluded that to, to that a little bit. Like, uh, I assume the new school that was built has all uh, water efficient. You know, is that a large source of uh, increases in these areas? Also, new home construction. Should our average, what I'm getting at, should our average number be a little higher what the average produces or should residential, some new residential or other users be looked at having to pay a surcharge to? I was planning on, uh, on doing some more uh, data gathering in, in that light, um, especially now with the, some of the, the pressure sewers uh, systems that are out there, they actually provide us an easy location to grab a sample and do some analysis and they'll give us a, a very distinct uh, sample of what uh, some of the new homes <coughs> and, and pure residential um, provide for wastewater characteristics. Okay. Uh, and you just have so it's an ongoing yeah. and we're going to be looking at those other mm -hmm. sources too to come up with our final policy on that. Mm -hmm. Good. Appreciate the uh, answers. Yes, is, is there a plan to um, for existing restaurants and establishments to evaluate them for surcharges as well, so we're equitable across the board, so we're not just going from here on out? Uh, I don't. I don't think we have a plan in place to do that. I think it's. I think it's an issue that the superintendent's going to have to think about. Um, and bring back, uh, bring it back to us as he gets more more information. My concern um, is just that we're we need to be business friendly, and so that if we have existing um, infrastructure that's out there, that they need to also be held to the same standards, so that we're not mm -hmm. viewed as targeting, so to speak. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're targeting anybody. No, no, we're, we're uh, not. We're not. Yeah. By any means. But um, yeah, I think I think the issue is um, with new. New 
development proposals that come in, we're able to um, um, implement the monitoring Very easily, standards yeah. and get Absolutely. the data. With the, with other already established businesses, it may not be so easy to do that sampling, um, and uh, so we'll have to look at the actual infrastructure that's in place with each location to see how we might be able to do the sampling. Agreed. Uh, my, my my only point was is do uh, have we started to look at or, or or will we be looking at just to be equitable across the board? That yeah, I, I think I think that the superintendent will bring that information back to us. Over time, during the coming year, I think we'll, I think uh, we have to remember um, if we're going to make a change in the way we're billing established businesses, right. they're going to need some Notice. advanced warning. Yep, about how that's going to kick in, and we need to know, for example, what order of magnitudes of dollars they might be looking at, so that we can make intelligent decisions too about how. Um, we would want to move this forward. Much so agreed. I just want to know if it was on the radar. Or not. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's going to be something the superintendent will be working on during this coming year, and as it as it comes together, we'll have to make policy decisions and possibly uh, possibly uh, sewer district rule yep. modifications uh, accordingly. So there'll be some mm -hmm. policy discussion among the trustees. I'd be remiss without asking. Thank you. Um, one question, one comment. Uh, the samples that were collected at both locations, I, I, I'm pretty certain they both have a grease interceptor, and these sample locations are both after the grease interceptor, correct? That is correct. Okay. And then, um, th th so that was the question. My comment was just going to be that um, this is something that more utilities in the state are looking more closely at. This is not something that you know Scarborough is uh, is doing differently from anyone else. So I just thought I'd throw that out there for those that you know may not go to the same conferences. A lot of utilities are doing very much the same thing, ch sort of to check that the assumptions that they've been working under for years are still accurate. We're making adjustments if they're not. So I thought I'd just kind of share that information. Thank you. Yeah, I'd always thought that we didn't require a sampling manhole for restaurants that, that we're going into. You know, so I think we have them for most of our restaurants? We, we have them for most of them. There are certainly are some out there that don't. Um, it, it's kind of hit or miss on, on some of the old, especially some of the more established older facilities. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I started this conversation uh, a couple of meetings ago. And I don't have a problem with evaluating or even the surcharges based on strength of waste. I think that's fair, uh, especially following up on Joe's comment, if there's some way to make sure it's fair for everyone, um, you know, not just new but established restaurants too. That's a, a challenging uh, nut to crack. But my concern was the sampling program and the open-endedness of the sampling program. You know, right now we're requiring these new restaurants to collect and analyze samples once a month. And, you know, again, getting to Joe's comment, level playing field, busy friendly, you know, they're doing something that the established restaurants never had to. Um, and the only thing I was thinking of is maybe putting uh, some sort of limit on the number of samples, or maybe starting off with six months and then going to quarterly, and then after two years reevaluate the frequency of samples, so that you know this restaurant doesn't think that they're going to have to pay for a sample every month in perpetuity. I guess that's the only con major concern I had with the way this was implemented. Great. Other than that, I you know when I look at uh, high strength waste coming from some of these restaurants, you know, instead of 1.8, they're up at 6.6. .6. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff coming from them, you know, and uh, frankly, I've popped a couple of those grease interceptors and been bowled over by some of them, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, <clears throat> it's the sampling program that I had the concern with. Yeah. I, think, I think we can see just from these two examples that is pretty, you could say the range 
is close, but it's really they're really significantly different uh, in just these two. And it may be that over the course of uh, four, four quarters, um, we may see uh, that restaurant A is generating consistent results, and we might be will willing then to scale that back to maybe once per year mm -hmm. testing, and as long as it's still falling in that same range, then we're okay with that. Um, but I don't know if we'd want to say the testing just goes away. I think we've got to see what the data shows us. And then. And, and then again, I, I may have misspoke. I didn't no, mean no, to you make didn't. it go away, but I maybe after two years, after quarterly testing for two years, reevaluate. Yeah. You know, and some restaurants will probably have higher strength in the summer versus the winter, you know, whereas other year-round restaurants that may not be different um, seasonally. Yeah. So I think as we get that data, we'll be able to make intelligent decisions about which way to which way to go with mm -hmm. adjustments to the program. And I think the way the approval was worded on the last uh, item um, when you brought this up at the last meeting, Nick, I think the way that approval was written is that the superintendent has the flexibility to alter that schedule. So that could mean more testing or less testing based and on what the results are. That's fine by me too. Yeah. That's fine by me too. But as long as the restaurants know that this is going to be Every month, all the time, every time. Uh, right. You know, and I imagine that the superintendent has already communicated that to these owners, um, or at least to the developers, that that's the case. Yeah, I think it's going to be a bigger, it's going to be a bigger nut when we start talking about going to existing restaurants. I would agree. And trying to make that evaluation, and we'll have to use some sensitivity there as we move forward. And I'd just like to echo his comments. I think as long as our expectations are con consistent across the board and there's an expectation that's out there to the business owners what to expect whatever that timetable is so they're not taken off guard I think that would be a good standard to move forward to be good mm -hmm. okay so we'll be hearing more back over the course of the year um, and at some point the superintendent will have some firmer recommendations for us to consider. Uh, next item of new business is a release of easement uh, was Barra Clearview Condominium Association and uh, and by way of introduction um, we have a we have an easement um, just to recap from our last discussion on this we have an easement over uh, property of the Clearview Condominium project, which I guess is administered by the Clearview Condominium Association, um, which uh, was originally uh, granted to the town and for the purposes of installation of a sewer line across their property. That sewer line has since been abandoned and a new line replaced it um, within Easton Road so that there is no functional need for us to preserve our interests in this easement. And that's where the discussion was at at our last meeting. There was some, uh, there was some uncertainty as to whether the district um, had exclusive rights to this easement or whether the town held interest in this easement because uh, the, before the, this easement was uh, created before the sanitary district existed, I believe. And so when the district was uh, established, the town conveyed all of its assets um, relating to sewer um, to, the, to the sanitary district. And I'm in belief that that's how our interest in this easement um, was actually created. Beyond that, I'm going to stop and let Dave fill in any additional um, information and and make his recommendation to us and let us know what he's heard from the town. Um, <coughs> uh, Charlie pretty much did uh, provide uh, the background information uh, to this. You know, the the district did abandon uh, the their infrastructure within the easement back in the 80s and uh, uh, constructed new sewers within uh, Eastern Road. 
Um, I did have, uh, I, I, via email, I've had, had, had communication with the town's engineer uh, concerning this. And the, uh, the most recent um, correspondence I had, she has requested that the district uh, do release their interest in the easement and that the uh, the town will take it up from there. Um, they, they, she did convey that they, they still may have some interest in the easement on their part, but they'll deal with it on their end. Um, so if, which, so my recommendation is that uh, we vote to release uh, our interest in this easement and, um, and we'll be done with it. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. Um, do we have a specific form uh, we for do. the release of these? We do, but I, unfortunately I left it in the other packet. Okay, so, yeah. so we don't have to specifically reference that form then? No. Okay, so and we'll authorize the superintendent to execute any and all forms necessary to accomplish the abandonment of that, our interest in that easement. Okay, questions? Rob. Um, I'm, I'm referring back to last month's uh, minutes or, 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 or stuff that David supplied, and I'm looking at the map. And there's another sewer easement that goes through this property that's 30 foot wide. On the, you're talking about it on the other side of the property? The side of the through the middle of the property? Right? Is that? That's active. That's you're, act you're talking about the other side of the road. This, this easement is active. This is the easement that is inactive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This easement is also active. Okay. This is not us. That's not us. This is, I believe this is private. That's private. That's private. This is us. Okay. This, our, our sewer used to come down here and go down right. this direction here. Okay. And now it comes down and goes up and over. Okay. So this is not to this is not to the district. That is not to the district. That's private. Okay. I just want to comment then that with this easement going away, there is no easement. For a portion of that private sewer that, that, that would need to be taken care of. Because well, this true. easement goes to that easement. This easement, if we abandon our, our rights relative to sewer, this still needs to be, have yeah. rights to go there. This easement serves the needs of the condominium association in, a, in addition to. I believe there's a couple of houses up here on IW. Yeah. Yeah. And their, and their easements, they probably have easement rights to access this sewer. So it would be up to the condominium association to preserve their easement of this sewer line. Well, there is no easement here. No, they'll have to preserve some kind of right. They'll have to dedicate. Well, it's their own. I mean, it's their own sewer. So. Uh, well, no, this serves an offsite property. Yes, who who have who have rights into this sewer? So this is if this is their if this is the property of the condominium association, they don't technically have to reserve an easement for their own sewer line. But they have to them. allow an easement for the sewer that goes through their property. So how does it connect? It's now? the same sewer. How, how do they connect to no, our system? Their property line is down here. There's an easement that goes through that ends at this prior easement. Mm -hmm. If this easement goes away. There is no right for them to connect in. But if, if it goes away, it will go back to them. I, I understand. This will go back to them, but this easement ends there. I understand what Rob, what Rob is saying. If it didn't, if it didn't involve any off-site property, it would right. be irrelevant. Yes. But, but, we're the, but because there are other, property. there's a, some property uh, that's off-site, um, they would have to... There has to be some. So we have to convey a 30 foot easement Correct. relative to this to the existing active easement out here. So Correct. if we vacate our interest for that easement crossing the street, they would have to retain that in order to connect into our system. Correct. If the goes away, 
there's a stretch of sewer that yep. is uncovered for the old side. Right, then I guess it's 30 feet. So 30 feet across this I think sewer in a diagonal. It's a little longer than 30 feet. We currently have an easement that those people have rights to go through. Mm -hmm. I think any deletion of our right, we need a condition based upon our right being granted for this line to go and continue to our system. Go. Why are we being asked to vacate our, our rights to that easement? What is the benefit to us? Well, I don't think it's been explained. I mean, because that's the only way that neighborhood accesses our system. Well, this whole 50 feet, the, the reason that easement was there began, the sanitary actually was over there. It's Correct. Now been I, I understand that now. So we don't need the, this. We don't need it, we but they need, need to connect into our system. Correct. So we can vacate if, if, our interest. If in we vacate feet. our interest, they need to either pick it up, but yeah. so I'm not really sure that burden is necessary. What? The, the reason for the... the uh, the request for, to release our easement is the Clearview Condominium Association wants to subdivide a parcel off the off their uh, out of their property, and in order to make it developable, developable, they need to clear the easements that not only included us, but also I think it was Verizon. Um, was uh, it? it was uh, Fairport. Fairpoint. Mm -hmm. um, Fairpoint has agreed to release their eight-foot pole easement um, that runs the entire length of the property. Uh, can can you state your name for the record? My name is Matt Garrett. I'm the president of the board. There's, uh, a, there's yeah. a, at the end of the podium. Is a there's a microphone there so that the folks that are viewing the TV are very official. Sorry about that. No, that's no. okay. Um, Thank you for this, though. Appreciate. Introduce it. Yeah, yourself. no problem. Introduce uh, yourself again, please. My name is Matthew Garrett. I'm the president of the board of the of directors for the Risbera Clearview Condominium Association. I have no problem with the abandonment, but there is a right there that needs to be granted for the off-site people to get to our system. So as part of our release, I think it should be contingent on them providing for the continued rights to get into our system. Is that an amendment? Yes. Second. So loosely worded. Um, can I just ask a question to Matt? Matt, are you are you willing to commit to extending that 30-foot easement across this yes. portion where we're abandoning? Yes. Okay. Yep. As long as we meet whatever you guys are requiring and can get rid of uh, and get you to release anything that's not necessary for the continuation of us or any other uh, abutting customers, uh, okay, so we'd, let me try we'd to be happy to accommodate you. Uh, you offered an amendment to the motion, correct? Yes, I did. And it was seconded by Joe. And if if passed, and then the then the main motion is amended, and that's passed, what this will what the motion will do then is it will we will release our rights in the 30 foot strip that runs parallel to Eastern Road, and it's a 50 foot. I'm sorry, strip. 50 foot strip. Yes. It, you are, the easement that we're talking about is a 30-foot easement. Is a 30-foot right. easement, that and runs that 30-foot easement, then you're uh, by by condition of our release, you are agreeing that you will extend that 30-foot easement across the the boundary to the boundary of your property, so that so that the interests of the abutters to Clearview who are using this sewer line is clear to them that they have rights all the way through that sewer. That's system. correct. Okay. We would make that accommodation. All right. All right. Any other comments? All those in favor of the proposed amendment? All right, seven in favor, none opposed. All right, so now the main motion is pretty much as I've just stated. Mm -hmm. um, the, amended, the amended main motion is as I've just stated. Any other questions or comments on that motion? Okay, all those in favor of the main motion as amended? Seven to zero. Okay, so now Matt, you're going to have to do a little bit more engineering to get a meets and bounds extension for an easement to be recorded over that, for the extension of that 30-foot easement. And then uh, when you've done that, the release, the release documents can be signed by um, our superintendent and handed over to or delivered to the registry or whatever the mechanism. I'll get on it tomorrow. Okay. 
Very good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Your cooperation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Matt. I thought this would come in handy. It did. Yeah. It was a good idea. Very handy. Okay. Uh, new business uh, item C is an executive session for discussion concerning potential lease of district property uh, pursuant to Title I MRSA Section 405-6C. Motion to. Am I too I, early? I just I just want to point out that there there is. Um, the, the fall, there, were, there were two executive sessions proposed on the agenda. The second one um, I'm going to ask to have tabled. So we can do that when we come back from executive session, from the first executive session. Typically we would act on both of them so that we could not have to come back from executive session and go back out again. So if we just vote on this one, then I'll be asking when we come back to table the next executive session discussion. Motion to go to executive session. Second. All in favor? Anyone opposed? None opposed. Okay.
Okay, we're back from our recess for executive session. Um, under new business, uh, I like a motion to table items D and other executive session and item E, uh, purchase offer for district property so located on Eastern Road, please. Move to table D and E. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? No discussion on tabling motions. None opposed. Thank you. All right, item F under new business is the budget summary. Uh, a one month budget summary is included in the packet and I recommend approval. So moved. Second. Here's a second. Second. Any questions or comments on the budget summary? Mm -hmm. Looks good. Uh, all in favor? Unopposed. Thank you. Okay. Item eight is public comment. There are no members of the public remaining at our meeting. Um, trustee comments. Aubrey. Hope everybody got outside today and enjoyed some warmth and sunshine. <laughs> Hope there's more sure of it did. soon. Nick. No comment. Ben. No comment. Joe. I'd uh, just like to thank the, the district and uh, the crews for digging out the infrastructures over the last few storms we've had. Uh, I'm sure that's been challenging to keep operations going, so I appreciate their efforts and they continue to work. Great, thanks. Rob? Uh, I want to congratulate the state championship indoor track teams for Scarborough uh, and uh, wish good luck on any of the other sports teams that are still competing. And uh, a shout out and prayers for my buddy Hayden. And uh, see you tomorrow, bud. Jason. No comments. No comments. And uh, I'm good. I have no comments either. So I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Joe. Joe, second. All in favor of adjournment. Thank you. Good night.